We have the always amazing uh, coach, John K. Sellers, here in the house today, rocking and rolling with us. And John was just out at the Build event, and we're mixing it up today because John's coming in and he's sharing his top 9.5, which is awesome. I can't wait to see what 0.5 of a point is. Um, ahas and key takeaways that he took away from this event. And if you guys haven't been to one of these events, this is life-changing stuff, guys. This is top level, the premier leaders in our entire industry, all, all pulling together in one spot. And if you want to learn more about it, I'd reach out to John and ask him questions. But John, thanks so much for being here today and for running the Core 90 for the community, man. Hey, man, I'm so excited to be here, guys. And I'll tell you, I'm, uh, I'd like to say I'm 9.5, but I think we may have a few more than that as I started. You know, Jeff was asking me for the number last week, and I'm like, well, I think first he said 13. I was like, I don't know if that's that many. And then I start going through the slides and going through, I'm like, so I don't know what the real number is, guys. There's going to be more than that. There's going to be more for you to take. And just to let you know how we did this, the event was great. And what I'm actually doing is I took the slides that are from all the presentations. So over the last couple of days, I spent an extra four hours just reviewing the slides, picking out which ones I thought and presentations. So we're going to have a lot of slides today. It's pretty slide heavy for me. But I want you to realize there's going to be a lot of pieces in here for you to pick up and there probably won't be a lot of commentary in between but there'll be because I got a lot to go through so I hope you just take it and pick up what you can but I want to let you know all of these slides are available at buildevent23.com so for all of the presentations you can go and get the slides and also many of them are already up on YouTube when you go to the build event it'll say watch them so you can actually go back and watch the pieces you know, you can fast forward through. So it's a great place to get those guys. The other thing I wanted to mention is we've got another upcoming event that we're talking about right now, which is EXPCon in October, early October. I suggest all of you go. It is so powerful. And what you'll find is that leaders go to events. I don't know why that is, but when I see people that are doing production, they're leading the industry, they're the ones that are always going to events. So even if you're not doing the production yet, I'd suggest you get around folks that are doing it and go to those places. So getting started, Jeff, I'm going to share my screen and we are going to start rocking and rolling, everybody. So if attitude, effort, and focus are the things I can control, where are we coming up short? You know, whenever we're looking at changing markets, guys, the first thing is to think about what do I control? What am I doing in this environment? What I've talked to a lot of the agents in the group right now, they were struggling even the top agents, but now I'm seeing the pipelines are full again because they're adapting and changing in the market and they're changing what they're doing. So what can I start or stop doing that would dramatically improve my outlook or my attitude? Often we have to think about what we need to stop doing as much as what we're gonna start doing because we've got to create space for things to happen. And you know, it all starts in our minds. So what can we do to dramatically increase our efforts and results? Where, what can I start or stop doing that would dramatically increase my focus and clarity? One of the things that happens when markets shift and things happen is people have a tendency to lose their focus. And they're so worried during the day that they're actually not doing what needs to be done. So where can we get that clarity and focus back? So I want to talk about this with attitude. And this is from one of the presentations, guys, again. So this isn't my original. And so I want to make sure you know I'm stealing most of this stuff. We're not stealing it. We're actually just repurposing it. And I was had permission to do all this. So what is your attitude? One of the biggest things is, is your future bigger than your past? Many people spend so much time talking about what they did. Have you ever met anybody that still talks about what they did in high school? It's like, come on, let's get on to the next. What's the bigger future for yourself? Adopt a growth mindset. Never stop learning. That is one of the things I see with top producers is that they always are continuing to grow and they're willing to take risks. And one of the things about growth mindsets, guys, is it's not about I made a mistake. I just learned. What am I going to do differently? Be grateful about what I have. Now, effort. Marry the process. Divorce the results. So think about this. It's not – we're. It's about going through the process. What are we going to learn in that process? And we know that if you make enough calls, you're going to have results. 
But if you measure it one at a time, it's very scary. Get uncomfortable with being uncomfortable. I heard this more times, and we're going to talk about this. Where are we staying in our comfort zone that's not helping us get to where we want to go? Be honest about where we're spending our time. This is something that I find. I'm going to move this, see if I can do this again. We'll try. Um, most of us, if we really looked at our calendar every day and really saw where we're spending our times, we'd probably fire ourselves. I don't know, at least I would. You know, are we measuring? And I say when people think we're being productive, one of the things is, are you measuring 15-minute intervals? What if you took a week and actually just measured what you were doing every 15 minutes during your day? I think you'd be amazed about where you have more time. So what are your priorities or what we do? Everything else is just talk. And this is what I see a lot of people do today. They're talking a lot. We're not doing a lot. Where else do we need to get rid of the noise in our world? For some of us, it's eliminating Facebook off of our phone. So it's not distracting us. And have you ever heard this saying, guys? Be careful about who we're comparing ourselves to. Comparing our insides to other people's outsides. So I'm starting with some mindset things, guys, here, because I think it's it all starts with the six inches between our ears. And we're going to talk about some practical things. But I want you to be thinking about these and like, what can I control in my world? And this is what I really picked up was like, what again am I actually doing versus what I'm thinking about? I found oftentimes we actually think thinking about doing something is actually work. Now, if we're actually doing goal setting and planning, that may be true. But a lot of times we're in our heads about things and we're not actually, if we'd actually taken the time to actually make calls during that time, we'd actually get ahead. So let's dig in. Actually, this one's great. So this is really powerful to think about. Someone's told me the definition of hell. The last day on, on earth, the person you become will meet the person you could have been. Think about that. Are we tapping our potential? Everybody on this call has unlimited potential. Are we living up when we get to the end of our lives? Are we going to be proud about what we're doing? And that's starting with action every day, every day of what we're doing. So this is really interesting. Of all of our experiences, good and bad, and up until now, use this fuel for growth. So we've got to forgive ourselves for what we have done, what we haven't done. Most of us carry baggage about being upset about where we haven't lived up to our personal expectations. Today is that day to let that go and move forward. So now we're going to move into, and I love this one. In the, and this we're going to come back to this again, guys. And I want, you'll hear us talk about this. There's no pot of gold or freedom at the end of real estate production rainbow, guys. And, what, and we'll get going on that. Some of you have been around for a long time. Some of you are getting new. We're always going to be talking at the community about getting your production up. But we're going to talk about why you're actually doing it. What is the purpose? Most of the time, the purpose should be about creating freedom. So what actions and how are we thinking today? And freedom starts in small increments. We don't gain it overnight. And most of us are not going to save enough money to get it. So what actions are we taking today to help create our future? So to, right now, I'm going to get into production. We've heard a lot of talk about video. Guys, video, and I'm going to have two folks to talk about it. Mike Sherrard is one of the bigger uh, YouTube guys out there today. And I'm, he's had some steps in there that I want to make simple, guys. And so his steps one is, hey, get a YouTube channel if you haven't got one. Now, one of the things about video is we can't be thinking about a strategy that's a 30-day strategy. So for real estate, we're going to break down. There are strategies that are going to produce business today. And then there's strategies you're going to produce business long term. Typically for video, it's going to be a longer term deal. But if we don't get started today, when are we going to do it? And we know that it is required. So really, this take a picture of this screen. People often say, I don't know what to do videos about. And again, Jeff will have these slides up. We can do this. But these are so simple things that you can talk about. You know, what's the cost of living in this state, this city? Pros and cons of living. The pros and cons of living, like the 10 worst things about Salem, Oregon, that is going to be an amazing video. And there are 10 crummy things about living there, right? Or seven or five, whatever that is. Then the great things about living there. What didn't you know? 
these videos are going to start catching guys. Now people say, so when you look at YouTube, you're going to have short videos and you're going to have long videos. Shorts are less than a minute. Longs are going to be anything over a minute. So here's step one is I'm a residential realtor with the, this YouTube channel. I create videos that educate people on buying and selling. Just fill in the blanks. It's this simple. Now, creating a little studio, guys. This is You're seeing a picture of a fancy studio, but look at my studio today. I do half my videos here. I have another room that I've set up to do. It's not that complicated to understand that everybody starts from where they're at. If you look at most of the folks that did video, if you look at, I don't know if Brian Simmons has been doing a great job with his YouTube channel. Do you look at his videos that he started with two years ago? Sorry, Brian, if you're on here. They weren't that good. Okay. They're getting better and better every month. And you can see now he is having a lot of hours of videos and we'll talk about that. So the other thing is how do we make shorts? So you can actually make a long video and you can go to Opus and there's another one we'll share later that will automatically using AI cut your videos into short segments and you can repurpose those. So you're not having to do it over and over. It's a very simple, it's using technology, guys. And I'm gonna skip this page. But here's what I want you to look at. Mike Sherrard, people think, oh, he's amazing. Look at what his user count was. He wasn't even in YouTube in you know, 19. In 20, look at how it did. So it's over time, right? And that's the thing we have to think about is that for you, for all of us that are gonna be in real estate a long time, we have to think about what are we doing today? And we have this word that's called evergreen content. What are we doing today that people are still seeing, that eyeballs are still out there? And we have to realize that there's delayed gratification. And we know this as children, right? Is that, hey, we know that we don't expect results today. So we have to be thinking about part of our business is now business, part of it is future business. And we'll talk more about that as we go. But one of the things about video, and I've seen this over time, consistency drum, trumps intensity. I'll take somebody that's going to make 10 cold calls a day, five days a week for a year, and somebody's going to try and make 3,000 calls in a week. It's that consistent over time that we start getting results. And that's no matter what it is. Hey, we think that, you know, like if you look and say, okay, I'm going to work out X amount of hours over a month. Well, it makes sense if we try to do that all in one day, we won't get the same results if we spread it out over the month. And this goes for our business too. And guys, discipline's the key. The people that are the most productive in life, in business, they're the ones that have the discipline. And that's a muscle that we have to create. And so one is we start being disciplined and then we fall off the wagon. The key really is how fast do we get back on the wagon? <laughs> Many people work out for three weeks and then they miss two days and then they stop again for a month because they're mad at themselves. I've done that. Probably most people have done that. So trust the process. You may say, I don't know where to learn how to do video. Hey, there's courses online that are very cheap to get, guys. And you just get better over time. But this is one thing that I picked up that I thought was really valuable. Did you know that if you spend 100 hours on one thing, especially in a shorter amount of time, you're going to be better than 95% of the people? Now, we've heard the thing of become a master at 10,000 hours, but the truth is very few people put 100 hours focused into one item. You know, Jeff was a great prospector. Scotty's a great prospector. Were you guys that good the first 20 hours? No, terrible. Scotty, Scotty might have been good right away, but, but yes, look at him. But Shut up, I Scott. can tell you that's uh, probably not true. But I can tell you by 100 hours, he was getting pretty dang good. And by and what from that point, it was just he was already exceptional. Now you're just refining that craft. So the secret is getting started, guys. What is it that you need to do that you've been putting off? What is it you need to change your schedule around to make things happen? And you're going to hear me say that over and over. And I heard that from the top leaders is what actions do we need to stop? What actions do we need to get started on now that's going to change our results? And many of the reasons we don't do things is because of fears, guys. We freeze. And we saw a lot of people do that in the last year. All of a sudden, their pipeline didn't fill up like it 
had in the past. And all of a sudden, instead of going and figuring other things out, they just froze. And freezing doesn't create results. So how can we change that term to false evidence appearing real? It's not true. Most of our fear is not true, guys. So we really have to start thinking about how do we open our minds to change? We can change our story about what's happening in the market and realize today is your opportunity. You know, I could spend a few minutes talking to Scott Gephardt today and talk to Jeff, and we'd say, man, when did we grow the fastest? And I can tell you guys, 2012 and 2013 were huge years for me. You know why? Because agents were still getting out of the business. And the ones of us that were actually working created opportunity. And we have that. We've had 60, they say the number 60,000 is probably higher, have got out of the business in the last six months. Is that a bad thing? Not for us that are working. It's actually creating more opportunity. But we have to dig in to find that opportunity. So let's look at fear. Freedom, eager, active, resourceful. Take a picture of this one. Think about that. When I get scared, realize that this is where there's freedom. I've got to be eager, active, and I've got to be resourceful. Where are the answers that I need to get? And we're going to come back to that at eXp. If there's no problem that you're having in your business today that somebody at eXp hasn't already had, especially within the community and outside of the community, that isn't willing to help you solve that problem. Now, you're still going to have to do the work, but we're willing to do the help on that. So we have to be able to shift, adopt, and modify. I love this saying. And by changing nothing, nothing changed. Massive effective action is a cure-all. Real leaders are effective agents of lasting change. Tony Robbins. Now we're going to go into Krista Mashore. Maybe some of you have seen Krista now and realize, again, we're talking about YouTube here. There's 113 million viewers. 113 million, guys. That's a lot of eyeballs. And realize that the top producers, and this is so critical, is that the top producers, we think that we're just selling real estate. But if you've been here a while, you realize you can be great at writing contracts. You can be great at all the technical things and be broke. Because I can tell you, if you've done 100 deals or 200 deals over five years, you probably know how to write a contract is as good as the people that are doing 100 deals a year. The difference is they're better marketers. Where do you need to think about that? And so now we're going to talk about monetization in multipliers. What we talk about is influence, impact, value, and reach, guys. How do we touch more people's lives rather than one-on-one? -on -one? So this is what it looks like. If we're talking one-on-one, -on -one, the typical agent's going to make up to 75K, right? That's kind of the number. If we can do one to few, which means, hey, we're going to open house, we're talking to a few more, we're getting on Facebook, we're doing a few things, 75 to 200. If we can figure out how to effectively get out to where we're talking to many people at one time. I mean, Brian Simmons last month, I think had 225 hours of people watching his videos. Think about that. What's that divided by eight, Jeff? You know, uh, it's 240 hours, you know, so I mean, we're talking, he literally had more than eight hours a day of people watching, you know, videos, right? Uh, it's 40. Yeah. So I mean, that's pretty crazy, guys. So if you're only talking to one person at a time, what are your results going to be? So look at this. These guys create a video. 530 hours of watch time on one video. What is that's the reach huge. of that? I mean, that's that's epic. But the question is, what if you had one video that got 10 hours or 15 hours? Again, it's getting eyeballs and it's 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 not about who you know in your marketplace. It's about who knows you. Who knows you? And when they know you, you come in with a much higher level of credibility, even if you're not better, even if you're not a better real estate agent. But when you come in with credibility, people believe credit. They believe what they see on video, and they've also created a newer, a better connection with you. So, hey guys, hey ideas? John, John, oh, hey, real quick, I just wanted to pepper in here, just so everyone knows, every single video posted on YouTube starts at zero views. I just wanted to mention that in case you thought you're behind the curve, 
people posting videos today who are big influencer, their view starts at zero. Your views start at zero. The race is the same, guys. Like, don't don't put yourself down. Just realize it always starts at zero. Yeah, and the funny thing is, all the top uh, folks that do video, including myself that does video, that Brian does, and, you know, we're all, Jeff, we're all scared in the beginning. And we all think we look stupid. Um, we don't think they're perfect. But I can tell you, imperfect is much better than zero. I'll take an imperfect. And what we're also finding today is that people like real people. And there's somebody for everybody. That's what you're going to get out there. There's going to be somebody disconnects with your style because they actually see you out there. You know, I like the way Jackie looks. I like that when she talks, she has that tree behind her. It makes me feel good. I don't know why I connect with her for some. We are emotional beings. We like to think that we're making rational decisions, but most of the time it's emotion. Who do we connect with? And I can tell you when there's been that many people in a marketplace, if we get it out enough, we're going to find that people like us just because of who we are, uh, just for some reason. So what are the different ideas? Video makes most of us fearful. But 93% of brands got a new customer because of a video on social media. If you think Coca-Cola is doing it, why are they doing it? We don't need to reach the amount of people Coca-Cola does. We've got a much smaller marketplace. And this is so important. It doesn't matter how old you are, young, tall, short, thin, heavy, purple, green, shy, introverted, experienced, experienced or inexperienced, got an accent. What I love is when you meet, I've met so many top agents that I could barely understand their English. And they outwork everybody and they just go for it no matter what. And at some level, people disrespect that. So our biggest breakthroughs typically, guys, are hiding in our places we resist the most. So think about that. What are you resisting in your life? Are you resisting doing video? Well, maybe that's the thing you need to do. Are you resisting making prospecting calls? Well, is that what you really need to do to get where you want to go? Are you resisting things about your health? Is that what you need to do? Are you resisting having that conversation with your spouse? That's probably the conversation you need to have. I tell you, you think about this one comment here, guys. I could do this one comment and get off this video. And if you really took a minute, five minutes, and thought about what are you resisting in your life, this would be worth the call right here. but it's not going to be the stuff. So it's all about being unpolished and real. When you look at the uh, shorts, it's all about, it's just being unpolished. It's just connecting. You know, Krista Masher, she showed a bunch of videos. You've seen her with all these beautifuls, but she's like, it's funny. I do a bunch of videos where I don't look polished and they get more likes. They get more looks. The dumber videos I do are the ones that get more attraction. But we want to be thinking about adding value through education. And that's what videos can really do, is educating people the things that they need to do or they don't need to do that they aren't thinking about. And we may think they're so common sense. And that's what I found. And Jeff will talk about this in uh, presentations. And Scott will talk about this. And you know, most of the top agents will say, we do so many things that every other realtor does, but the clients don't even know that that's normal. So if we actually make it sound special. Like, hey, we let you out of the listing, no questions asked. Most agents will let people out of a listing. However, nobody else offers it as a guarantee. So now it's a value item. So let's look at what some of the things. We want to start thinking about neighborhoods and community and lasering down onto what we can do. So here's what we look at. We look at and we all talk about funnels. If you're not thinking about funnels in your prospecting, if you're not thinking about funnels with your sphere of influence, that's what it really looks like. So with this video idea is how many people are putting out into the big world? And we're all trying to generate them down to where we actually get our audience and we can convert. And this is how we have to think about it. We're going to talk about this more as we go. I'm going to skip this slide. So we want to think as educational marketing as a tool. So your clients are here. There's a gap between where you want them to go. How do we become the educator to help them get to where they want to be? Everybody has a place they want to be. If you're the person that's helping them get there, they're going to trust you and want to be with you. You know, I just took a listing the other day and and the client called me and she got the house sold in you know, a couple of days. But what the beauty was, I met with her a month ago and she had a lot of work that she needed to be done on it. One of the things is that she knows that my specialized knowledge is 
that I know how to, I know what, how, what can be fixed on a house cheaply. I know what things need to be done because I have a fix and flip knowledge. She also knew that I have relationships with contractors. She goes, John, I want to hire you again because I've helped you before, but that was a rig, really big pull for you is because we got all this work done in 35 days. If I had tried to do this on my own, it would have taken me three months if I'd been lucky. So what is your specialized knowledge that your clients and the market is starting to know that makes you different? So these are some of the ideas. How do I, how can I market to sell my homes for more money? And it's funny, we're going to say national updates, seller tips, neighborhood tips. What if we put together a savvy seller, but you can name what that's going to be for a certain neighborhood. We want to break it down. There's going to be, because people are thinking about their own. In our market, it could be Eagle Point Golf Course, right? That neighborhood. And you can take most of the stuff from any neighborhood, and then you just make some specific things in there. So let's take it out. What are the stats on a certain neighborhood? This is interesting stuff. People are going to look at this. What is a crime report? What's the census? What's the school? Small businesses. Now we start creating this funnel for a specific neighborhood. What if you have a funnel about a neighborhood and another agent doesn't? Is that going to separate you? Because we said, talk about becoming a marketer. What separates you from the other agents? What if you didn't open house and somebody came in and said, hey, go to my funnel. <laughs> That's probably not going to say funnel, guys. Here, go to my website here and check out everything about this neighborhood. Do you think the other agents are doing that? No. Become an expert, guys, and specialize in a couple of neighborhoods and start producing something. And then you add one on top of another. You start with one neighborhood and then you go to the next. We don't start with 10 all at one time. We start one at a time. And this is what people say. I don't know what to say about my neighborhood, guys. This is fun. If you haven't started using chat GPT, now's the time to start using it. Simple as ask it. What are the thing? What do people want to know about a neighborhood? What are their fears and pains? What are their aspirations? What are their objections? You can actually ask it. The list goes, you know, on and on, guys. You can actually go into it. Type into Chat GPT. Please write me a script for a video in my voice that is playful yet authoritative. What would a seller who is selling a home in this neighborhood want to know? It's going to be much simpler now than what you thought it would be. What are the pain points? You know, what would a seller, what do they want to know if they're going to sell a house? So get good at chat GPT and it's going to make it a lot simpler. Now, here's another one. Videoyo.io. I've used this before. This is how you can cut videos again down into shorts. It does it automatically for you. You can use MidJourney to actually create pictures of what your avatar would be. Who's going to buy into that neighborhood? And they're going to connect more. You can Photoshop it, obviously, guys. AI makes it simpler. Now, there is going to be a presentation that Krista is doing actually just for Build. Folks, it's actually tomorrow. And you can take a look at this where she's going to go into a little deeper than this and what the opportunities are with that. So let's come back to some mindset, guys. 100% of success starts with opportunity. The beauty about being a real estate agent is the opportunity is limitless. The opportunity is amazing. I think this. I think so many times about real estate and that what other business can you get into that you don't even, I think you have to have a high school education or GED now. And you take, in some states, it's only 40 hours of classes and Oregon, it's 150. And you have the ability to create massive amounts of income, that you can create income more than what doctors have that worked for 13 years to get through school. But it starts with choices, guys. Here's a choice. This is Chris Bear, one of our top leaders. You know, Chris says, you know, if you saw the picture, he's like, I'm carrying this 20 pounds. I know I don't want to have that 20 pounds, but, you know, I keep making the wrong choices. And that alone, he said, was just a banana split. I'm like, oh, my gosh. So 100% of our destiny is based upon our decisions. What decisions are we making today that aren't supporting our vision? Do you have a clear vision? Same age, different choices. 
I see this with real estate agents every day. I've seen this in my own business, and maybe all of us is some years I haven't made the right choices in my business, and the results showed up. And I've seen that with agents today saying, I don't know why I'm not doing business like I was before. Well, what aren't you doing? Are you still, you know, or what I've seen so many times with agents is we have a good month or a good two months, and we quit doing what we were doing that was making those results. And people say, What's happened? I'm like, Well, did you quit making calls? Uh, yeah. Well, you got 90 to 120 days, you're going to fill that pipe again. So it's in the moments of our decision that your destiny is shaped. Now we got a couple of Tony Robbins quotes in here. I'm a Tony Robbins lover, by the way, guys. So if you haven't done Tony stuff, you want to check it out. It takes massive action. What limiting beliefs are you using to make your decisions? So you've heard this a couple of times already. So why is it that I go to this build event, these top producing agents and top leaders, they start saying the same things. What limiting beliefs are we using to make our decisions? What beliefs do we need to change? And this one's pretty interesting. Our perception equals reality. Perception of your client also creates reality. If they think you don't sell a lot of houses, even though you do sell a lot of houses because you're not telling them, guess what their reality is? That you don't sell a lot of houses. Do we need to yell from the hilltops a little bit more about our credibility? Yes. Those of us that don't want to brag at all need to start bragging a little bit. I know it's not easy for most people, but we need to start telling our stories a little bit more. Our emotions trump facts. This is the same way with our clients. You know, when we're out listing presentations, we can do all the facts we want, but if we don't connect with them at a deep level, they're going to choose the crappy agent that doesn't do the production and isn't as good as us. I've seen it happen lots of times. Success comes from being positive. And here's the other one. Third parties translate into higher credibility. How many of you have got enough Google reviews that you need, that you should have? Where are you focusing on getting testimonials? that you're actually sharing with the market and with your clients and people you're meet, interviewing with. We need to be, one, asking our clients for testimonials. Video those testimonials, guys. So what would happen if you had a list and you didn't know the people and you said, hey, I want to send you some stuff what some other folks are saying about me. And you sent them 10 video testimonials. Would that be powerful? So take the time to get started on that. So now I've talked about a couple soft things in that, you know, video is a lot of people would love to do video because they don't have to take rejection. But what I'm going to tell you is video is not going to produce instant results. Almost nothing produces instant results, but I'm going to tell you, it's a six month, two year, three year thing. You're going to be in real estate for 15, 20 years, get started today. But for most people, they're going to have to start in action about talking to people and call reluctance. I'll ask agents all the time, like, well, how many people did you talk to this week? I don't know why. They say, well, I don't know why my business isn't growing. I don't know what's going on. How many people did you talk to this week? Well, I was really busy. Really? How many deals you got in escrow? One. Well, let me tell you, one deal in escrow is not a full-time job. Second of all, they talk to 10 people. 10 people is not going to get you where you want to go. So we need to get over that call reluctance. And the first, obviously, is the fear of rejection. I still have fear of rejection, guys. And I can tell you, if you haven't made calls for a while, and I know this goes, and I'm, I'm looking at my first screen here that I see Jeff and I see Scott a lot, and that both were big prospecting guys. Guys, if you haven't made calls for 90 to 120 days and you got to start getting on the calls again, is it harder than when you've been doing it every day? We all have that reluctance again because we haven't been doing it. So we've got to work through getting through that rejection and realize that it's worth it. How big are your goals? Is taking care of your family more important than worrying about rejection? For me, that was always my driving force. Always my driving force was, and still is, 
Am I willing to make the calls I need to make no matter what's going to happen? Is that more important to me than how my kids are going to think about me? It's not. Are my goals for my life more important about how, how I feel about rejection? No. That got me through those calls. The other is fear of failure. One of the things with prospecting guys in real estate, this is a game of failures. This is a game of failures. The people that take 100% of their listing presentations are the people that are not going on enough calls. No top agents close every client. The people that close every client are the people that are doing five or 10 deals a year, and they're only doing it with their friends and family. You want to do 40 or 50 deals a year, you're going to get rejected. So get used to it. The other is people feel like they're being a bother. You ever feel that way? I don't want to cold call people. I'm going to be a bother. The question is, where can you add value to people? So think about this. If you're calling circle prospecting, let's say, and you're going around a neighborhood, what value could you bring to them? And the other thing that I like to think about, and I believe top producers do this, is I realize there's going to be a certain amount of people who are going to sell houses. And I've always believed most agents aren't very good. And they're not as good as me. There's a handful of agents that are good. If I'm not the one making that call, there's a good chance they're going to end up with an agent that's not very good and they're not going to get the best results. So we have to think about ourselves in that way. And if you don't think of yourself as a great agent that you're going to a lot of value, then what does I say? You might need to get into a different business. Or what do you have to do? What do you have to learn? Who do you have to associate with? What pieces do you have to do to realize that you are a great value and that you are the right agent for them? And that if anybody else takes that listing, they're not going to get taken care of as well as you. So let's do this in a role play. I'm not going to role play, but I'm going to think about this. If you're a new agent, what value can you bring to a seller? Well, you have more time. You're going to care about them more. Top producers can't spend the same amount of time. You're going to do everything you can. You are so committed to getting that listing sold. You could actually say, look, I'm going to spend all of my time on your one listing. And that could be the difference. Hey, I know that person sold a lot of houses, but the truth is they don't have the time I do to dedicate to this. And I'm going to spend that time on them. So it's that mindset that we have to be thinking about of what's possible. And realize that don't think of yourself as a car salesman. And if you're thinking about your car salesman when you're making calls, then what do you need to change about the way you think? Because when we're contributing, makes all the difference. So we need to break the cycle, guys. Where do you need to be making the calls right now? What actions do you need to get into? And let's talk about the simple ones. Let's get prepared. Reframe your mind. Do you need to settle down for a few minutes and build confidence back into your brain? Today, before this call, I was nervous. Still a little nervous. I had to think about, breathe deep and really say, Man, I've prepared for this. I went through these slides trying to take the right piece. I went to this thing in Texas. I spent a lot of hours. There's going to be one or two people that are going to pick up something in this that's going to make the change that they need to have happen to get to where they want to go. And that's as I'm thinking through it. So where do you need to reframe your mind? Practice makes perfect. The more calls we make, focus on the value you offer. Seek accountability. This is one thing that most people don't do. Who do I need? If you're struggling to make those calls, who's a partner you can say, we're committing to make X amount of calls. We're going to check in with each other every day. Then breathe deep. Five, four, three, two, one, go. So remember, it's not about eliminating fear. It's just fighting it and doing what needs to be done in spite of our fear. Do you want to be an average agent? The average agent makes $54,000, guys. After 16 years, the average agent at 16 years makes 85. Maybe that for some of you, that's really good money. But what I want to tell you is, you can just go to Taco Bell and make that. You're getting $20 an hour right now at most places. $20 an hour is $40,000 a year. But the beauty in this business, if we take massive action, is we can have massive results. And we need to get out of our head and get into action. So think about this in prospecting. 
It typically takes about five minutes per conversation and 18 conversations. And we're looking through Verl here through, they've, they've coached hundreds of agents and they're very clear on their statistics. Now I'm not saying you may take a little bit more in the beginning to get these numbers, but it doesn't take that long. 90 days of making calls and you're an expert. The truth is 30 days if you've made hundred calls a day. 18 conversions equals one appointment. 18 conversions takes 90 minutes. 90 minutes takes one listing appointment. If you could have 225 appoint, 221 appointments, 55 buyer and listing presentation agreements, look at what that number works out to. That's $116 per hour. What else are you getting paid like that for, guys? It's 7000 an hour, John. It's 116 7, 000, a minute. Excuse me. 16 a minute. Thank you, brother. So where are we getting in our own way? This business has the ability to make so much. And I hear people say like, I'm not the type of person that makes calls. Okay, that's okay. What are you going to do to make sure you have enough conversations? Because if you do not make conversations, you are not going to close a lot of deals in this business. And you're going to be on that roller coaster. And this business is brutal, guys. 85% of the people will be out of this business the first year they get their business, first time they get their license. 90% will be out within five years. Do you want to be one of those people that are here five years from now making more? So we have to stop wishing people would call us. We have to start adding value. And here's a way you can do that, guys, and make things simpler. So we got A's for actually our appointments. B's. So B's are folks who are going to be buying in the next 30 to 90 days. We just need to put them in our calendars that, hey, we're calling them twice a month. And really, we could do that as simple as putting them in and say, people say, well, when do I call them back? When you can. And you're going to call back all the B's the first week of the month and then the week of the 15th. That's simple. What do I say to them? Hey, I'm just checking in with you. Anything changed that I can help you with? It's just as simple as that. You can get better scripts. But Jeff, is that pretty straightforward? It's terrific. You know, and now we're going to the next, guys. Whoops, excuse me. I think I just went to the very end of my presentation. That was great. Let's go back. Ah, crap. Look at amateurs, guys. So we got a few more. Fail, fail forward, John. Fail forward. Ah, we're working it, guys. You got to see you're seeing a preview, guys, of what we're going to have here. So... You know what's beautiful about the statistic that you just shared, though, John, is that the the 90% of agents that are gone in five years, if you're a newer agent, by the way, I always viewed that stat as the best news ever. Because I remember being in my real estate classes and looking around and being like, really? This is this is going to be my competition. It's like stepping into the ring and everybody's half your size. You know what I mean? Like if you guys don't have a little bit of internal like oomph when you're coming into this, you need to develop that right now. And the way that you develop that is what John's talking about, which is habit forming, habit forming. And by the way, great habit because you're here today. And I appreciate that. Hopefully you're also taking notes. That's a great habit and paying attention. That's a great habit. My Thank habit you, is I'm going to do presentations even though I screw up. How's that? So... <laughs> It's doing it better not. So C's, guys, these are the people that are over 90 days. Just call them once a month. It's the same thing. Hey, just checking in. Anything I can help you with? Hey, have you seen what's sold in your neighborhood? Is there anything I can provide value to? It's simple as that, guys. It's consistency. And here's one that I love. I hear people talk all the time, like, I don't want to make cold calls. I don't want to make prospecting calls. I really look and say, what are you doing for your top 50? This is powerful. This will change your business. Have you figured out who your top 50 are? So either that people have already referred you people to before, because remember, if somebody's referred you before, they're more likely to refer you again. Who are the people that have the most influence to be able to refer you? And here's a simple, again, through Verl, one personal touch monthly. What would that be like? How can you strategically make sure that you're going to make a phone call? You're going to go to lunch. You're going to do something with them to have a meaningful impact every month. Schedule your next touch after you're with them. Give outbound referrals. Think about what businesses are in. What value can you add to that 50? And then how many, and again, I like big client appreciation parties for your, everybody. But what I really like are client appreciation parties for your top people. What if you had? Two parties a year. What if you had an idea where I'm going to start inviting my top people to my house? 
and we had three or four couples over. People do business with people they connect with. And when you're inviting people to your personal space, they are more likely to, re to refer to you. And how strategic are you? Look at what this looks like. Are you keeping track of the touches of those people? Are you putting them on a schedule? And this is one that I love. Guys, if you don't have a coach today, and you're not where you want to be, you need to hire one. If you say you can't afford it, that's probably even more of a reason to do it. Because I've seen all the top agents have hired a coach. And we've always heard this, Michael Jordan had a coach. You know, Tiger Woods had a coach. Did he need a coach? If he needed a coach, then we probably need a coach. I've got two coaches right now, guys, that I pay for. So this is interesting. What's changing in the marketplace today? Because when you talk about what an avatar is, is who is your client? We want to make sure we're not fighting the market. So, you know, when you were doing, when the market was bad, you had to go with foreclosure and short sales. If you tried to say, I'm not going to do foreclosure, I'm not going to deal with short sales, you didn't have many opportunities. We all had to change. So what does the avatar look like today? This is what it looked like in 22. 22 to 56. Look what it looks like today. 42 to 66. Why is that? Well, interest rates made a big effect. But let's talk about it. Is your marketing going towards young people or is it going towards the gray hairs? Why are the gray hairs being able to move today? So we got to make sure we have the right bait, guys. What marketing are we doing to bring people in? This is what's appealing. Some of you on this call, do you even know who that is? No? Jordan, do you know who that is right there? <laughs> so, because you guys are not old enough to those clients, that's Dallas. That's Ewing, right? How do, what was it? Uh, you know, so you guys don't remember what tapes that's are, but that I do. These are the clients that are selling today. What do you need to learn? You know, that's where they're at today. They're the 55 plus. They're playing pickleball. Pickleball is the fastest growing sport in America, by the way, if you didn't know that. So here's why. If you don't have equity today, it's hard to sell. But the age group we're talking about have equity. They don't care as much about what the interest rate's going to be because they're not taking as big loans. A lot of them are trading straight across cash. It's a great time to be moving for them because if you've got cash, it doesn't matter what the interest rates are. If you're only borrowing 50 grand, it really doesn't, you know, or 100 grand, it really doesn't matter that your, you know, your payment's a little bigger. So we've got to be thinking about, are we going towards the avatars that are actually moving today? It's a great time to be moving into a 55 plus community. Are there 55 plus communities in your, um, we helped my sister buy a house in Sun City, uh, Phoenix uh, about a month ago. Guess what? They got three offers on that house. All of them were cash. My sister's 57 years old. And again, there's always reasons. People think there's nobody buying and selling today, guys. The mar we do have 40 to 50% less transactions than a year ago, year and a half ago. But that does not mean that there are not houses being sold. Because guess what? People sell when they get divorced. They sell when they die. They sell because they're broke. They sell because they get married. They sell because they have more babies. They sell because all of a sudden they got more money. There's going to be continue to have deals. We have to be present to where the opportunity is. So let's talk about skills. Some of the figures of top earners. They have a high level of competitiveness and a desire to win. How high is your level to win right now, guys? How focused are you? Have you developed the skills that you need? Top producers have world-class skills. They figure out what they need to learn, and they, go, they are relentless about finding those answers. The other is they set standards. You know, people talk about having habits, but I like standards. 
I don't leave my office until I've talked to 10 people a day. If you set that as a standard, I'm not leaving my house. I'm not leaving the office until I talk to 10 people a day. You start showing up at eight o'clock at home every night, you're going to get in a little bit of trouble. What's going to happen? You're going to start making those calls earlier and you're going to start getting more efficient. They figure out there's just two or three lead, four lead sources. We don't need to have 10 things we're doing. What are the three or four things that we're going to get really good at? The other is we track and monitor. You know, I love this about, I say that if I wouldn't ask all of you that aren't bowlers, but you've bowled before, hey, what's your average when you bowl? I can tell you, you're always going to give me a number that's higher than what it really is. Almost always. So the key to top producers is they track what the real numbers are, and they're going to measure against those. Embrace innovation. How are you using chat GPT now? No, easy it is to all of a sudden write your description for your listings now with chat GPT. How much time does that save? We also figure out where the gaps are in our business and our lives, and they go quickly to figure out how to shrink that gap. They also hang out with the right people. You're hanging out with the right people on this call. We are the average of the five people we hang out with. You know, if you haven't taken that adoption and believe it in your mind, it is true. What other associations do you need to have? And they invest in coaching. Continue to invest in themselves. So talk about, I'm going to skip through some of these guys because I want to, I love this one. You know, some people will say, you're so obsessed. Like it's negative. Nara would say obsessed is the only word that lazy people use to describe the dedicated. You have to become obsessed if you want to have results that are different than average people. And I don't believe anybody that's on this call wants to be average. Does anybody want to be average? I don't think so. Then we've got to become obsessed about the right things. We also might have to think about starting a, a startup mentality. If your business isn't doing what it needs to do, where do you need to think like, what would I do if I was starting up a real company? Now, I like balance in lives, and I think balance is really important. But I can tell you from my own experience, from the top producers I've worked with that I'm around, there's a time in their life where they have to act like, they're a startup and they have to become obsessed. They have to be willing to work 60 or 70 hours. Their family isn't going to understand. Their friends aren't going to stand. They're going to get criticized. There's going to be judged. They're going to be lonely. They're not going to have balance. They're going to fail. And you'll want to quit. If you've ever tried to achieve anything great, you're going to want to quit. But that's where we keep moving through it. I'm going to skip some of these. So making, we often make things too complicated. Real estate's not that complicated, guys. What are the three or four resources sources that we need to work on? How do we control our calendar? And today, how do we really work on our sphere of influence? How do we do open houses? If you're not doing open houses today, I mean, if your business is doing everything you want, okay, great. But if your business isn't, open houses are working right now. They weren't working two years ago. Hard to get anyone. Today, everyone I know that's doing open houses at the right house are getting traffic. And you need to be in front of people. Do you have a buyer consultation that's effective? If you don't, where do you need to get one? And then we need to learn to handle objections. So Jeff will tell you is that he is a better cold caller than I am. Jeff, there's only so many objections, aren't there? Yeah, there's very few. Scotty, you got better. I mean, you've only, you start hearing the same things over and over, don't you? And you can learn what those are. And we start doing scripts. People are so against scripts so many times. Scripts are not bad, guys. It's learning to, it's actually a way to actually help people at a higher level. Because when you're thinking about what you're going to say and worried about what you're saying, are you going to really help somebody at the highest level? No. When the things to be said come automatically, now you can actually be focusing on the client. So what scripts do we need? How do we need to read them 10 times a day? How do we need to write them down? How do we need to role play? Can we record our scripts and actually listen to them when we're driving? 
And really, we've got three standards, guys. We all have the same amount of time. How are we using it? How are we using our time? How are we using our mind? Are we taking time each day to learn something new? Are we taking time to read 15 minutes a day to increase our skills? What are we doing to increase our energy? Energy is currency. <laughs> have you ever noticed, we have a guy in our market that I love, and I won't go into names, but the guy has energy. And it's just like, you're just attracted to that energy because the guy, I mean, I think he's a little crazy, but he's got energy and it just, you want to be around him because he's got this energy that believes in things he's going. Where do we need to up our energy? Where do we need to up our energy when we're talking with clients? Where do we need to talk our energy with our children, our family? What do we need to build that energy? Because it's all a choice, guys. We need to figure out what we need to say no to. And for a lot of us, we need to say no to more things so we can really focus on where we want to go. Many people are way too distracted. They're trying to do too many things at one time. What can we do to get to the next level? I'm going to skip this one. What does your schedule actually look like? Look at this schedule, guys. If I was to look at your schedule today, how is it filled out? Have you blocked out time for prospecting? Have you blocked out times to go to lunch with your clients? Have you blocked out time to get your workouts in? What's in your calendar gets done. And when you look at top producers, they have a full calendar. But they've time blocked. You know, one of the things in real estate has hit people, oh, I couldn't make that, you know, I couldn't make that scheduled call because I had to go to an escrow closing at 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, guys, what I've learned, top agents, they're doing a lot of production. They have set things that they do in the morning, and rarely are they going to go to an escrow closing in the morning. If, so, if they go to closings, they're going to make sure those are done in the afternoon. They're going to go and do appointments in the afternoon. The morning is when you're going to do the hard things. Is it easier to prospect in the morning than it is in the afternoon? Yes. Is it easy to show houses in the afternoon? Yes. It's easy to show houses. It doesn't take a lot of energy. So there's what we call willpower. We have a limited amount of willpower. And we need to think about what are the things that are going to move us the farthest in our business and make sure we're doing those things in the morning. I'm a guy that cannot work out in the afternoon. If I don't work out in the morning, it's not getting done. So guess what? I have to get up a little earlier to make sure it gets done. I'm a guy that wasn't going to prospect in the afternoon. I can put it in my calendar and go, Oh, I know the ideal time to cold call a prospect is between six and seven at night because that's when people are at home. I couldn't make myself do it. So I knew the best time to do it is when I had time and when I had willpower. What are your lead sources? I'm going to skip through some of this, guys. Don't want to get to a couple of things here. This is how I want you to think about yourself, guys. If people were to look at you today, would they think you're a stallion? Do you think of yourself as a stallion? Do your actions look like someone of a stallion? Or do they look a little more like this? Nothing wrong with these little ponies, but you're probably not going to pick these ponies when you want to go somewhere. And even worse, guys, how many of us show up like this? You know, we talked, Gary Brecka came up, and when he talked about energy, guys, Gary Brecka has created 10X Health Systems, and Jill and I are investing in this right now. And he actually was an actuary, so he actually looked at how long people lived. And they could predict, if you got, they got five years of medical records of someone, they could predict within a month of when people were going to die. So he decided, what if I spent all my energy to actually help people live? <clears throat> they brought up a couple items. And one of the items that we're doing is a genetic test. They actually have a test now for $600 that they'll go in and look at your DNA and they can actually break it down and show you what things are breaking down in your DNA and what you're missing. And they're having tremendous results for this right now. So I encourage you to go look at this. We talk about protocols. So and I'll have a, I'll have a link you can go to guys. One of the biggest things today is 
where are we getting magnetism? Are we walking on the earth every day? Are you actually going out and spending a little time in nature every day? Are you breathing deeply? They find most Americans, we're not breathing deep enough. We're having very shallow breaths. Where are we taking the time to actually, because if you think about it, before you've got to get on those calls, are you taking the time to fill your lungs? And we're getting out light. So let's talk a little bit about Gary's protocols. Are you getting up in the morning and spending 10 or 15 minutes in the light? Right now, what I do is I get up and I work out and then I go out and barefoot in my backyard and I do some Tai Chi things and breathing. Eight to 10 minutes. Your breathing can be there. Are you drinking enough water? This can be measured, guys. How many cups a day are we doing? Because you will feel better. The grounding we talked about. I'm not a cold plunge. Anybody a cold plunger in here? I'm having friends having tremendous results. Are we taking the right supplementation? Are we eating the right foods? And here's the test for this 10X, guys. I suggest you go look at this. They're having tremendous results of people change lives. The health issues that people couldn't figure out, the doctors couldn't figure it out. When they looked at people's DNA, they're seeing big differences. So now we're going to dig in a little bit about EXP. Some, some of you guys are new to EXP. Some of you have been here a while. Well, I want to remind you, and this presentation I got a lot out of, is just reminding me, why is EXP a great place to be? One of the things I've found is I've worked at a lot of different real estate companies. I've never seen a level of talent at one company as I see here. Top agents are coming and top brokerages keep coming to EXP. The other is it's a 10x opportunity, guys. It's a 10 plus. And what we're finding is level 10 players, too many of them are at level five opportunities. And that's why they're seeking out EXP right now. Whether you guys realize or not, there are so many things at EXP. Most agents are not taking advantage of everything that's at EXP. I asked agents, how many have went on a class at EXP World lately? Seen even looked at what the, the curriculum is. So many of us haven't. And there's so much there. Rev share, it's a big deal, guys. And some of you may say, I don't care about rev share. And I'm going to talk to you about why it doesn't matter. Whether you care about it or not, understand why it's so good for you. So we paid out $185 million last year, guys, in rev share. $185 million. It's a way of getting off the transaction wheel. But only about 15% of the agents take advantage of it. But you know what? The beauty about why it matters is, Top agents are coming because of the rev share. And what we found is, and as I said earlier, there's not a problem in your business that somebody at EXP will not help you solve. That is not the truth because they know that they want to help other agents. They help other agents or organizations grow. But also what happens is their stock goes up, which all of you have stock. So again, I'm going to ask you today, guys, if you're having problems in your business, if you're struggling today, who do of us do you need to reach out to? What challenge do you have? We can find the answers to help you get where you want to go. You're still going to have to do the work. But I don't want you to get stuck for very long. This is a big deal too, guys. 70% of the stock is owned by the founders, us agents, and the staff. Do you know what the conversation is at most brokerages? How they're going to squeeze more money out of the agents. So the stockholders can make more money. Well, we're the stockholders. EXP is concerned to figure out how do we pay more money to our agents? How do we continue to make it better for them? Through awards, um, discounted stock. Really, we're a startup, guys. We're one of the few companies that's still improving our model. Most companies today are trying to figure out how they can raise the caps to agents how they can charge them more fees. Our fees have not suggested. I haven't seen our fees go up since we've been here. No. What's really cool is we actually improved the model recently. We actually changed some of the payouts in our rev share that went from 30 to 40 to be more competitive in the market and to give more money to agents. While other agents are changing their models to be negative to the agents. We've also just added a luxury program. You know, it's crazy, guys. We had agents stand up, and I want to say, how many agents? They said, how many agents have sold over a million dollars? 
million dollar houses. I think there were a thousand agents out of 3,000 that said they'd sold over a thousand million dollar house. We are the company that's doing luxury today. We're in 24 countries now. They say 23, I think it's 24 now. We are worldwide, guys. And that makes a difference for you. Again, if you start promoting yourself, you know, one of the things that EXP is most agents don't go on the referral network, do they, Jeff? Go into the EXP world or an enterprise, join some groups for referrals and start monitoring it daily. And you will actually be able to pick up referrals. There are so many referrals being passed, but agents don't even go there. Technology. We're continuing to grow our technology. You guys, I have agents that have been at EXP for a year and I go, do you go in? They'll say, I don't know where to get that question answered. Have you even been to the world? No, I haven't been there in six months. I haven't been there in a year. Guys, take advantage of the technology we have. It's powerful. Risk reduction. So again, we have more brokerages coming to EXP right now than we ever have. So brokerages with 50, 100 people are coming right now like crazy. The other is so they can have it without overhead. I'm going to skip. You know, Curtis Johnson, this is the view of his back. He couldn't work for months. And guess what happened? He had built a revenue share business and it kept growing. The money kept coming in. So one of the questions I'm going to ask you guys today, and we came back to the beginning. I want you to sell more houses. That's why we're here. EXP sells more houses than any other company right now. But here's the difference. I want each of you to think about what are you doing that if you got hurt? What would happen today if something happened and you couldn't work? What investing are you starting to do? And whether it's building revenue share, where it's buying rental properties, why it's understanding something else. I want you to become a great producer, but I want you to start thinking about what would happen if something happened to me. And am I starting to think towards my future to create that? Curtis. Are you taking advantage of our health share, health care? Guys, we have... Uh, there's a couple different programs right now. We saved a lot of money doing it and got better programs. So check it out if you haven't. One of the things I love about EXP right now is that, you know, I worked at other companies and I found it was very lonely. And here I am at a virtual company and I have more close friends now than I ever had at the brokerages I was at before. Now, if you don't dig in and connect, it's not going to happen. But I'll tell you, I've, it's been so much easier and I have so many more people. I've got friends all over the world now that I can call that we connected and that will help me get where I want to go. Are you using that to help yourself now? Are you connecting with our world? And that's part of that is what's the culture? That's part of the community of what we're really building, guys. And again, um, there's so much of what we talk about at the communitycenter.com. If you have not checked out the communitycenter.com lately, some of you may not even have signed up yet. Uh, Jeff's going to put it out on Facebook again, how to connect there. Go in and connect there. Are, and go in and check out the trainings there. There's so many things there. All these trainings are there. There's so much there. And we all want to help. Guys, I don't get enough calls. That's really crazy. Very few people call me for help. And I'm like, I want to help. Most of us want to help. Be willing to go out and help other people and be willing to ask for help. Hey, John. Yeah. Uh, you know what? If, if you guys are not currently registered for the community center, but you're already with us, go ahead and text me and I'm going to put my number in the chat right now. Uh, text me and I'll send you the link so you can get yourself signed up. Uh, we don't share it publicly, but um, if you're a member, we'll just confirm that and then we're going to get you guys in there. Thanks. So we're going to be wrapping up here pretty quick, guys. But what I want to talk about is a little bit about RevShare. Some of you said, I don't want to do it. It's not a big deal. You tried one time. But I got to tell you, agent recruiting is like teaching a dog to fetch. You know, if you try to teach a chihuahua how to fetch, it's probably not going to work. You know, and you've all, you know, we sponsor people into business or we help people get into real estate. and We wonder why they're not making it work. But you can't make people do what they don't want to do. So one of the things, guys, is we're probably not going to teach this dog how to fetch, no matter how hard we try. Probably going to even have struggle with this one. It's not fat. He's just fluffy. But how many of you think of yourself as a Labrador? Labradors, you don't have to teach how to fetch. 
I always say in real estate, it's funny, we got, you know, I can help people with all the trainings and everything. And yet there's a certain amount of them aren't going to do anything no matter what. But I can take certain people, if they don't even have any training, they're going to figure it out. And that's what we're looking for as Labradors. They're going to jump. They're going to run. We need to make sure we spend less time with the other dogs and find our labs. Who are the Labradors in your market that you know would win? This is an opportunity for them. Make sure we're going after them. I'm going to skip to a couple of things here, guys. We've only got a few more minutes. One of the things I keep talking about, and I talk with all agents, is understanding compound interest. Compound interest is so powerful, guys, in that it is one of the eighth wonder of the world, really, is that compounding over time. And again, that saying that says most people overestimate what they can do in a short amount of time, underestimate what they can do with sustained effort over three to five or 10 years. Same way with our efforts and what we're building. Look at this with agent count with RevShare. So you got 50 agents in your group. We're talking $2,700 a month, guys. 50 agents isn't a big number. But you know what? What would your life look like today if you had an extra $3,000 a month coming in? For most people on this call, that would probably cover their house payment and their car. What would that look like if you woke up to that every month? This is crazy. So if you had a check for $1,000 a month in rev share, which is not that hard to get, guys, that's the same as having $240,000 in your bank account at 5%. If you had $2,000 a month, that's the same as four hundred eighty. dollars And I'll bet if I went on this call and I asked everybody, probably would have less than 10% of the folks, probably 5% that have $480,000 in the bank or equity in anything outside of their primary residence that produces income. Look at that, two grand a month. It's not a lot of agents in your down, in your organization. So where are we spending that? It's all about skills, guys. It's mindset, skills, and systems. I'm gonna tell you, for most of you that haven't attracted anyone or haven't lately, you don't even have to have that many skills. You just gotta plug people in. There are people that are looking right now I was on a call with uh, Tuesday with a friend of mine in our group, Craig, Craig Mahew. Craig was a big producer. And guess what? He'd been in the business six years. Do you think one person had ever brought up EXP to him? He goes, we never got talked to one time. So many people think everyone's been talked to, but it's just not true. So everything starts small, guys. I know when I came to EXP, I was scared to death. And, you know, you talk about fear, and I was having this conversation with my friend the other day. And I remember I came to EXP in November, and I only came because I wanted to build RevShare. And February came around, and I hadn't talked to one person. And I was out having a beer with a buddy, went over, our wives were out of town, I went to his house, we were having beers, smoking cigars. And I said to him, I'm just scared. What if nobody will follow me? What if nobody will come into this? And we only had 3,500 agents yet. We didn't even know the business would work. And he looked at me and said, what have you got to lose? And he actually said a couple of swear words along the way. And he said, why are you being such a wimp? But he actually used some other words. Why are you being such a wimp, man? What have you got to lose? What if this does work? You've made other things work in your life. It's just a matter of a certain calling a certain amount of people. And you know that next week I started calling people. And I think I made 40 calls that week. It was a lot. I took a lot of rejection. I got to tell you guys, I was shaking when I made those calls. But one of those calls was to Joe Yates. And many of you may know Joe. And Joe got excited and came to EXP. Joe's changed my life because of that one conversation. Then he brought Scotty Gephardt along with him. And I almost cried when they both showed up in my office because somebody had somebody to run with. And the question is, I almost didn't make those calls, guys. You know, we get to a point where we have an organization that's bigger and everybody thinks their story's different. But the truth is, I was scared. And Brian and I just talked about the other day. And he said, why are you being such a pussy, John? And uh, that kind of hit home. And I said, well, nobody will follow me, really. It's not about you, John. It's about the opportunity. You've got an opportunity to change people's lives with this. And if you talk with Joe today, 
this opportunity changed his life. Not only did it change my life, but the opportunity changed his life and his families for generations. So everything starts small, guys. We got to th thinking about one at a time. What are you doing daily? It's all about you. Be coachable, be humble, be obsessed. I'm going to skip through these because I want to get to a few. We've got to be relentless. And this comes back to everything we're doing. So the question I'd have for most people, have you created your list of 100 agents that you know? This is one of the things I find most agents don't do. They want to go talk to people they've never met because they're scared of rejection. What if that one call could be responsible for five to $10,000 a month. And I can tell you that one call to Joe is responsible for more than $10,000 a month coming into my bank account, guys. Think about that. You're one call away. And that for me, that that's life-changing. I don't know about you guys, but an extra 10, 20,000 a month passively is pretty life-changing for me. I'm not going to skip on this. So what do we need to say to those folks, right? We can also, then we've got our list. But I tell people, don't worry about your list of people you don't know. Let's get through your list of 100. And then I'm going to tell you guys, once you've got through your list of 100 and you've talked to all of them, call me personally, and I will personally spend an hour with you, and we'll talk about how to go to the folks that you don't know yet. But get through the people you know. It's really simple, guys. All we've got to do is become an inviter. Invite people to come to this call. Invite people, live presentation. Jeff has a presentation that goes out every, you know, that you can actually do on demand or look at every Thursday. Um, watch him, send him a video. Invite him to an EXP con. Invite him to an EXP event. Invite him to more trainings. Look online and see what trainings we're having on the campus, and you can get them to watch it together with you. But one of the big things is be in a hurry, guys. Hey, I only got a minute, Jackie, right? It looks like you've been crushing it, Jackie. Hey, are you, I don't know. I'd love to have you attend one of these events. I thought about you. It's a great thing going. If I were to invite you, would you come? If I, would you? Get him to commit, guys, and then get off the phone. We don't have to explain EXP, and I don't want you to explain EXP. We screw it up when we try to explain it. And again, um, Jordan, we're going to put these up and then, um, but they're also, if you go there, this is Jay Kinder's presentation. So if you write this down, so here's some of the script invitations, very simple. Invite them guys. And I want to put this down. So one of the easiest ways to create new relationships, ask them what they want. Even with the people, you know, what are you trying to do? You know, it's really simple. It's like when I'm talking to people, it's like, hey, Colby, what are you trying to do with your business these days? Tell me more about you. Hey, Joanne, tell me a little bit more about what's going on in your business these days. You know, I had a call with Joanne the other day or with I texted her husband the other day. What's going on? What's happening with your golf game? He shared some things that are going on in their life. You know. Now I have some action steps in my mind of what I can do to help. A lot of it's just praying. But things are going on, right, guys? And, and that's people want to know you care. This is a simple form you can actually put together. Take a picture of this. Is actually when you're talking to somebody is find out some things. Ask questions. Now, this is great. Once you've invited them to something, guys, we don't want to ask them, you know, hey, what do you think? It's about what did you like that you saw? What did you like? And guys, one of the biggest things is getting them on a three-way call, guys. Get people onto a call with us. Don't try to explain EXP because it can be overwhelming. So who can you get on a three-way call? Anybody look through. Most of us look at who the leaders are in our organization, guys. And if we need to get somebody outside of our organization for that person, he, man, we got lots of people that want to help us. But the big deal is, who is somebody? We've got to position that person right. Like I talked about refer when we do testimonials, who are you positioning? So we're going to get into this. And again, this is, you know, people have asked me, I don't know where all this is at. If you go to the communitycenter.com, we've got a whole section on attraction. 
When I started wanting to build my attraction business, guess what I did? I went, instead of watching TV for two weeks, because I can guarantee almost everybody in this call, if I looked at your schedule and I looked at how many hours you're watching TV, YouTube, or Facebook, I'll bet I could find 10 to 15 hours a week, minimum. What if we took two weeks and said, we're going to cut out any of that crap, even though I love TV, guys, and I'm just going to study? What would that do for your life? Realize that we're not trying to get people in. It's really about letting people and finding the right golden retrievers and finding the people at the right opportunity at the right time. Because so many of it is Joanne and the G team. I know Joe talked to you guys a year or two before, but he caught them at the right time when they were thinking and evaluating. Because if you try to talk them into it and get them in six months before, it would have made no difference but their mind was open at the right time. So it's about connecting and following up with people. And then it's about helping people grow. So guys, I've covered a lot of things. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing here. You know, I covered a lot of things, guys. And a lot of times I really prefer to have a little more of a power, less PowerPoint and really be asking questions. But I wanted to really give you a fire hose today. Um, of that hopefully there were a couple of things that resonated in this today that realized that all of us are just a couple changes away from ha having dramatically different results in our lives. It's that one or two things that is gonna change, whether it's inside of our mind, is it some action we need to take? What are we resisting that if we change that could change everything for us? We all have so much unlimited potential. And the challenge is, most of the time, it's ourselves that are getting in the way. And if it's other people in our lives that are getting in the way, maybe we need to change some of our associations for a while. Sometimes we have family in the way that we need to quit spending as much time with. Some of you have times we have friends that we need to quit spending some time with for a while. Or change the conversations we have. And realize that there's so much that we're all capable of. And realize today, the market is still great, guys. It's just different. There are so many opportunities out there today, but we have to change our attitudes. We may have to change some of our methods. And realizing that for some of us, we focus so long on our sphere of influence. But the truth was, we really weren't giving value to our sphere of influence the way we should have. They just knew us, so it was easy for us to call us. Where today do we need to add value to them? Because I'm going to tell you, there's a difference between a past client coming back and them actually giving us referrals. Where do we need to start adding value to our sphere of influence and putting it into our calendar of the time we're going to be with them to get the different results? So I think a couple of guys I want to wrap up is that I want to remind you about EXPCon. Jeff put it in there. I'd love to have you sign up, guys. It's going to make a difference in your business. That 90 days, I try to go to an event every 90 days because I find that gives me the energy and reminds me the things. Half the time I've been in the business 30 years, guys. There's not a lot I'm learning today that I didn't know except about chat GPT and some of those, but there's very little I don't, I haven't already learned. But what happens is when I go, I get re-reminded of what is going to make the difference in my life and my business. So thank you very much, guys. Also, if you're not at uh, communitycenter.com, make sure to text Jeff and let's get you there, guys. Have a great week. Make it your day.